Welcome back everyone to you know the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. McCullover. And right now, we are back in playing as the Republic of Ireland. Are we a Republic? We are the Republic, but more trouble in the special zones. Sean Lamas massages his nose with the rough skin of his thumb and the pointer finger, before rubbing the hand over his tired face and resting his chin upon his palm. Alright, I'm again, I'm ready, he said with a sigh. What's the news? His new secretary cleared her throat. The girl's a helpful sword, given his job because she was the niece of some MP or another who cashed in a favor. Sean Lamas had traded so many favors to keep the country together that he could no longer keep track of who owed who anything. Mr. Uh, Tishoff, the Northern Irish Constabulary, reports that the militant organizations have increased their activity this week. The IRAs plastered the town with anti-German pamphlets as citizens' guards committed yet another arson attack in the Protestant districts. And the Ulster Volunteer Force has hospitalized two more constables in the name of throwing out the Catholics. The girl looked to him expectantly, as though she thought a rousing speech was about to come from his mouth, and in a decisive order to be given to save the nation instead, he let, let out another long, ragged sigh. More trouble in the special zone? Even again, there's always more trouble in the special zone. If anything, this was a slow news week. No, it is March 15th, 1963, and I'll be honest here, after completing the last episode, I figured I knew a little bit more about it, so... I kind of know what to do a little bit, and I basically replay the entire last episode off screen. As you see, compared to where we were yesterday, we're an industrial juggernaut. We have 51 factories, 4 military factories, but 47 civilian factories, because I figured, you know what, with this, it's almost impossible to remove a German mega corporation presence, so I just said, screw it, just, just give as much presence as possible. So I took that and just stopped caring about that. So we got a lot more investor approval, and we have more investor approval. We can request more funding, and by requesting more funding, because we currently have $8 million, we can keep buying civvies. So, we're building pretty darn nicely. But unfortunately right now, we are currently doing or trying to pass a media bill with media regulation. The age of the TV is upon us. TV and radio have exploded recently. Nearly every house in Ireland has a TV and nearly everyone has a place to find a radio. These devices are usually used to broadcasting world events, sports, and the weather. The main focus for us, blank, the many newspapers in Ireland. That sentence has no uh, verb. All with their independent ideas and mantras, however. These can be great tools to garner interest in a cause. Currently, there's a lot of propaganda flooding around. Whether the news corporation is pro dudist or pro other dudist, even run by Protestants, oh no. We need to put a stop to this with a bill. Once we can limit this, we can start to print our own pro FF news, which is not very good, seeing as, uh, well, the third stage already, that's not really good. But we're going to keep going on no matter what and keep increasing our efficiency here and there. Um, we need, ooh, concessions. Hardliners won't like this. Uh, we need to pass a button. Actually, off screen, I already tried to do radicalize it. So we get support from five left wing TDs versus three. We lose support from three right wing TDs and gain support from le five left wing TDs. I already tried this off screen. That it doesn't do anything for us. So yeah, it's not good, man. It's not good. But I think if we reduce police power, NRC won't like this. Four liberals will support the bill. Ooh, ooh. I don't want the NIC to hate us. How about you guys? Uh, there's actually. Well, hold on. 10, 30, oh, compromise, every faction except the De La Valeris won't like this, which means you lose cooperative skill or power with them, so we don't want to do that, and you guys are already, already maxed out, so we can't really do that, so I guess with the liberals, reduce police, NSC won't like this, well, uh, 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 if we have to, you know, if we have to, and then we can request more funding, now we've hit 70% approval, 13, and then we'll go more civvies. That's what I've been doing off screen. Also, off screen, I have been attacking. Oh, actually, oh, there's someone corrupt. That's not good. Suppression of resistance. Also, like, we screwed up the car. I screwed up the car bombing last time. So we went back and fixed it around. So now, it's a little better for us. So they're friendly, but they're somewhat corrupt. But with the paramilitaries, now they're strong and extremely angry, weak and extremely angry, and very weak and extremely angry. Nearly non existent. The ICG. Not bad. Do you see the crisis? Cool. How will the crash? I just want my, our bills to pass, you know. More civvies? Why not? Funding? Sure, why not? We still have 50% approval, so. More civvies? Why not? You know what I like? More civvies. So this thing should pass, because we need at least 74, if I remember correctly. And we have 77, so. The bill passes. A change for the better. We will lose a lot of public approval. Oh, that's on part of the right wing. Oh, whoopsie. Safe press only? I have 50% more political power. Um, approval? Wow, that's, that's probably not good. That's probably not good. Request more funding? Sure, why not? Civvies? Why not? We love the civvies. Anything else? New tariffs, new taxes? No, nationalize them. Eh, not really. I don't want to decrease their approval anymore. 40%. I don't want to go below 40% and uh, civvies. Media regulation. 
Now we don't have enough PP, which is not very good, and we have no war support. Oh boy. So public meetings, bill, civilian investment. Well, I guess we did that one. I guess we could do campaign the Korish. Gain some public approval. The current status quo that holds Ireland together is a coalition government that we hold with the help of our friends in the Labour Party. While we don't actually need to promise anything to the workers for our recent coalition to hold in the current political climate, and we hold a few high-profile rallies that show our politicians standing side by side with the popular Labour leader Brendan Corish, people can make the educated guess that we're a pro-worker administration. Nice. Oh, we can do this too. He wants to finish that. Nice. And don't you dare stop spending that money. You keep going. Don't tell anybody that you can't do stuff. Alright, so over here, can we go and do this? Yes. And now we need to build another city in Luth. And by doing this, and we can actually get it done, well, the people will like us more. And investor presence will increase, which sucks, but our GDP will also increase. So a civilian factory has to be constructed in Luth, which is... Oh, it's, oh, that's already maxed out. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really not good. Oh, that might be a little something that might need to be looked at. A civilian factory has been constructed. Oh, oh, that's not good. Well, even if we take the hit there, uh, that's not good. That's really, actually, really not good. Well, I found a little snag in there, in the, in the uh, little thing I was doing. Apparently, we can't build there anymore. Mm. Max factories in the state, anybody? No? Okay. A couple comments, though. Uh, see, people want me to go with the coup route, if there is a coup route. People want me to go to the left route, and or social democrat route. So, like, people want me to go all sorts of different routes, and unfortunately, we can only take one. So, we'll see when we get there. <laughs> we'll see when we get there. Also, uh, someone did leave in the comments below. How to pronounce different things. So I do appreciate that. Thank you for leaving that in there. So I uh, don't completely screw up all my vocabulary and pronunciations. And right now, I'd love to do this, but we need... Oh, have a lesser opinion of us. That's not good. Uh, probably, that would great. we'll do this one and that one, but we need to save our PP for passing bills. And non-existent, which is good. Weak and middling. So, cool. So, like, Tisha, Tanishta, Fina Fal, Fina Gale, Hahi, Tiakta Dora, and Dole. I am so bad at saying this stuff, man. Oh, baby. But after we compromise with them, let's do civilian interest. Ooh, public meetings. Let's do civilian investments first. After recent ele elevations, we found out that our infrastructure is good, but not nearly as great as it should be. Our current budget for the year is limited, but we can see if we can stretch it. If it is, if it is possible to stretch the budget, we should try as much as possible. If there are more money we can acquire from projects that aren't needed can be funded into public works and infrastructure. This bill, if passed, will give us more funds that we have allocated to our budget. Using this money, we can begin to invest wholly into Ireland. We will direct a large chunk of the funds into the railway lines that runs across Ireland, making our shipping more efficient. This should, in turn, help our economy. We can also give the leftover funds to investors and entrepreneurs to build Irish businesses. And so we can do dinner with corporate members. The presence will increase by 1%, but approval will go up as well, which is something that we want. Oh, that really sucks that we hit that snag right there. We need more funding, though, immediately, too. Mm. Focus on the NIC, huh? But at least we're saving some PP. But ICG terror. Smoke rises over Protestant Ulster. The Irish Citizen Guard, Northern Ireland's most competent and enigmatic paramilitary organization, made a showcase of dominance today, setting off a concealed satchel and bomb made from German military ordnance in a Protestant neighborhood of Belfast, wounding several and leaving several Anglo Ulster citizens in critical condition. The brutal efficiency of the attack was marked by the trademark silence of the Citizen Guard, spray painting their flag near the bomb site, but otherwise saying nothing. How dare they? Yeah. Seriously, that's not good if. A civilian factory has been constructed in Luth. Well, I think we can still do that. We don't have to change jack squat, and we'll get it done in like three, seven weeks. Nice. I don't want to spend any more civvies for that, so. Uh, let's see. Nothing there yet. They're very weak, and they're extremely angry, but that's okay. Gabbing, of course. Civilian investment bill. Nice. All right, we have no <laughs> war support. That's really bad, actually. New taxes for Germans, no. Decrease, decrease, decrease. We're not interested in decreasing for now. All right, so we have 68 out of 84. Civilian investment, stage two. Make it more radical. Eh, I'm kind of okay for now. Mm, hardliners. Expand the police force. North Irish terrorists won't like this. I prefer doing that one, because we kind of like that. And how many are supporting us now? Ooh, actually, we can do that again and save on PP. Can only be done once every month, so that kind of sucks. We need at least two more. Compromise? Every faction? No. Encourage. We lose 30 political power to get this one passed. Um, encourage. This would be a way, so we have to do these guys, so we might as well just do it now. There you go. We've got barely enough. Wow. And the Jewish movement, have been, Jewish movement has defeated the militarist uh, Madagascar. Very cool. 
the right calls for unity. Despite the fact that her bill is quite clearly left-leaning, several members of the right have unexpectedly decreed that they will put their support behind it as well, to show that Ireland and its government is strong and united. This is quite a good thing for us, as we now have a much wider base of support for the bill's passage. Well, why couldn't you do that before, guys? Before I spent my pee, -pee? What the heck? Cool. And civvies. I want to save some money for now. I just want to lower the terrorists. I don't like terrorists here, man. I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, terrorism usually isn't cool. Usually. Usually. Oh, and I don't want to forget. I don't know why I stopped doing that. Also, we are... We have a deficit, an annual deficit of almost a billion dollars, so... Not bad, I'd say so myself. Not too bad. Very weak. Middling and weak. There's no place for terrorism here. No, 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 no. Efficiency? Yes, please. Thank you very much. And 77 is very, very nice. And then we... The light finance bill? Whatever. Public meetings bill? How about that? <clears throat> the protests by the Ulsterites have begun to get more and more violent as time goes on. Each day, it seems like tensions get hotter and hotter. Ooh. There's a chance that it could boil over at any moment. While we may not exactly like the Ulsterites by any means... <clears throat> We still need to prevent a full-on war breaking out in Belfast and the surrounding regions. Our solution is to make a bill that will restrict the size of public meetings to 10 people a day. No more than that, or the assembly is considered unlawful. <clears throat> this should begin to restrict the protest massively and give us an opportunity to arrest the troublemakers without causing a huge issue. Now we wait for the troublemakers to protest and we can arrest them. Just declare that there is a virus around and you can do that. <clears throat> the Coalition Bickers. Uh, well, if you'd like to buy that, please go right ahead. What a disaster. Ooh. Oh, easily slide through the doll. Cool. What a disaster. But we still have enough support for them, so. Actually, right now we can just go and request more funding. That's fine. Another city. The bill passes. Thank you. A change for the better, or so we hope. A slightly empower the left wing. Two more civvies and a little more depth. That's okay with us. That's totally okay with us. Um, 45% approval. Not bad. 60 factories, my friends. Oh, 67 is not very good, my friends. No, no, no. Public meetings. I probably want to de-radicalize it. This just does not seem very good for us. We have 67. We need seven more. We don't have that much PP. We could de-radicalize it now, but we might get a total of two supporters. Which is not very good. Concessions. The hardliners won't like this. We lose even more war support. Ooh. But we'll get four more labor TDs. Four more. 71. Then we need three more. Uh, you only get two from this one. So really, if you do that one, 20... You might be able to come over here and then reduce police as well. Uh, politics. You could only get 1.22 every day, so we could maybe de-radicalize it. Will we get three? No. Lose support from three right wings. So, oh, this is not very good. Oh! Oh, look! The left calls for unity! Ireland united! Despite the fact that her bill is quite clearly right-leaning, several members of the left now have unexpectedly decreed that they will put their support behind it as well, to show that Ireland and its government is strong and united. This is quite a good thing for us, as we will not have much wider base of support for the bill's passage. Oh, we're so close! So close! Oh, oh, can we encourage them? Reduce police? Okay, we got enough to pass the bill. That's good. Power is quite right-wing, and approval is just kind of in the middle, so probably 48%, right? 51%, okay! We are barely getting approval from people. Five, per, five million dollars? Okay, so we can meet with the members. Sell. Oh, see. Okay, so investor approval will increase by 20%. Investor presence will increase by 10%. That's fine. Lower tariffs for Germans? That's fine. So be it. New taxes for Germans? Probably not. More funding? Civvies. Funding? Nice. Funding? Nice. I'm not even doing military factories. Actually, you know what? Let's do a military factory. I usually don't do that one. You know what I like? Funding. Civvies? Sure. Anything else in here? Nope. I'm okay. Let time go on. And... Um, how are we looking for this stuff, actually? How's the GDP? Good. Listen, we're doing great with Ireland. Um, we're doing relatively okay with this. I maybe don't mind getting a few more millies. Just so we can continue pushing through some more um, guns. We need guns, 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 so. Not bad. Savings are good. Public meetings built. And. Erin Gobrach. The country has finally been stabilized. Our economy is finally stable for once and not on the verge of collapse on itself. 
for now. Also, it has thankfully been stabilized as well, so we can finally focus on some other things. We can finally relax for a few moments in time, maybe throw a small celebration, however, we should begin to plan out the next few years. While it may seem that we're finished on the domestic stage, we still have a lot to do on the international stage and even some issues back home. One of them was being the situation with Ulster. While it seemed that to have stabilized, it could still boil over at any moment. On the international stage, we need to contend with the issue of reopening talks with Germany, however, right now is a time of celebration for Ireland. Because nothing bad is going to happen very soon. Actually, we already have enough... Ooh. Funding? Okay. Oh, well, actually, that's 30%. Whoopsie. Maybe we should have done that one. Okay, get another melee. Nice. The bell passes have changed for the better. Slightly empower the right wing. More daily political power and ideology drift defense. Very good. Civilian spending. Nice. They're very present, but they don't like what I'm doing to them. Cool. We have almost 80 factories, my goodness. We could get one more milli. UVF Terror. Uh, a siren's roar across Northern Ireland in the aftermath of the latest and increasingly brazen terror attacks conducted by the Ulster Volunteer Force. Several government buildings were assaulted by bands of men who lobbed firebombs to the destruction in broad daylight, shouting UFVF slogans to civilians in hiding, and beating several office workers as they attempted to evacuate before making a speedy exit ahead of the police response. Catholic nationals across the nation are growing more and more frustrated at the audacity of these attacks and the inability to strike back at the terror group. Come out, you black and tans. Come out and fight me like a man. They're strong still. But now they're middling. Very weak, very weak. The Ulster Volunteer Force needs to go bye-bye. Oh, they're very corrupt. That is not ideal. Alright, and what do we have here? How are we doing with this stuff? Construction? Do that one. There you go. Alright, we're done with the millies for now, so... I think we probably need, still need to keep some... Uh, PP for later, so we'll do that. Just save it for now. And I think we're done doing this for now. We have 83 factories. I mean, honestly, that seems extremely good, so... We definitely gotta get rid of this corruption here. Okay, do it one more time. 65, 63, they're so incredibly corrupt. That's so not good. We need to send weapons to them. Which would be nice. We need political power and guns. But guns should be getting much better. Five a day is not great, but the evening rush. O'Flaherty's pub was busy as usual. It was the evening rush, and people were coming out in droves for a bite to eat at the pub. Adam O'Flaherty, the owner, had been kept on his toes with the influx of patrons over the past couple of years. Ireland was finally starting to get back on her feet, it seemed, and the people were feeling the benefits. More and more people could afford to eat out or get a drink, and Adam himself was even able to afford to hire a proper cook so he could focus on the bar. Tom and a few of his buddies were sitting at one end of the bar, chatting loudly among themselves. Tom was now considered a bit of a local hero after he organized a strike outside one of the factories owned by that German dude, Josef Obbs, and managed to get the whole darn country talking about the workers' safety. How about another round, Tom? Adam shouted over the den. Tom raised his mug in acknowledgement, setting off a round of cheers among his fellows, all clamoring to pick up the tab. He hadn't paid for a beer in weeks. Yes, Adam thought things really were starting to look up for Ireland. Even the paramilitaries in the north had quieted down some after their terrorist attack. Though Adam knew better than that to think that was anything more than calm before the storm. Really, the only problem Ireland was left facing was the darn Germans. Adam frowned. Sure, the Taoiseach liked to talk about how the Irish were independent from the Reich and even introduced some legislation to back Irish businesses over German ones, but the big corporations in Germania still had their slimy tentacles all over Ireland. Factories owned by great German companies still dotted the landscape, and Germany was the primary importer of Irish-made goods. Too much of Ireland's economy was tied up in German hands, Adam reckoned. Adam was drawn from his reverie by a call for another round of drinks, swearing about the Germans could come later, perhaps for now they could enjoy a, piece of peace, a bit of peace and prosperity. Who wants another beer? <clears throat> Not bad. Uh, suppression efficiency is not very good. Oh, we have quite a bit of peepee, though. Look at that. Oh, because we have... Oh, you know what? Since we have it, just do that, then. Somewhat corrupt, just because, uh... We're not doing a focus right now. But once the German Civil War starts, we'll probably have a focus to do. Dinner, yes, please. We'll get some dinner with those guys. 35% approval rating is not great, but it is what it is. And we can close out of this now for now, because we have no bill. Not bad. Uh, six million dollars is not enough. Are we close to getting this one done? We somewhat are, actually. Oh, wait, hold on. Um, what happened here? We built one. We already built one there. Oh, just... Whatever. And this should be canceled, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and come down here. Select a state. And now we'll build one in... Oh! Okay, then. Now we don't have enough money. Crap. That's not good. I guess we gotta wait. That's fine, whatever. We have 84 factories anyway, so I don't really care too much. Cool. Um, I wonder how long it's gonna take. It's only September. Uh, you know what? 
Ooh. I don't know if there's any, going to be any sort of events that are, that are going to happen here before the Germans you know, go kaboom, so... Maybe we got to wait a little bit. Maybe? Maybe not? I don't know. We'll just do this together. Just, just in case. Just in case. Because even though I already spent all our money, and we can't do any of this stuff yet, which kind of sucks, it's okay. Well, at least we're improving on our guns. At least that's good, right? Yeah, 600 minus 600 is not too bad. And the national debt is looking not too bad either. Very cool. Oh, yes. They're all pissed off. Nearly non-existent. Very weak. Middling. Nice. We have a lot of PP now, which is awesome. Come on, when do we get that next stuff? Oh, come on. We have enough PP for it, just not enough guns. And also, that was another common thing from yesterday, that the investigation stuff is super, super important, and you guys are absolutely correct about that. Super, super important. So, uh, raise salaries. Sure. They're friendly. At least that's good for now. And, oh! Privatize and sell to Germans? Yes, please. Lower tariffs? Yes, please. Alright. Now we can quest some more funds. Civilian industry it is. And we now we need to do cork. Cork, cork, cork. What are you doing, cork? Very good. Ah, uh, get some more money, why not? There you go, civvies. I really wonder how many civvies we can get before... Oh, dinner with them? Yes. Take them out on a date? Oh, and the game is liking so hard that the German Civil War is now firing, even though you can't see my blue spinning wheel. Mouse wheel? Eh, not too bad. Whoa! Oh, I didn't click on that. But I will request more funding. The end of the pact. It's a disaster here, say the ambassador to Germany over the phone. Everyone's throwing their stuff in the game. There's skirmishes around the country, and everywhere, and everyone here is taking a side. All right, Gallagher said, Siad, Foreign Minister Eichen, where is the successor to the Fuhrer? Is he in control? Nobody's in control, said Gallagher. Speer's students are revolting in the rear. Bormann's gathering who he can down south. Goring's taking over out the east. And the SS is going berserk and occupied France and Poland. Heck, Spado seems to be putting his name in contention, and his forces are locking down Germany as we speak. Muffled conversation on the other end. <clears throat> Sorry, the, la the last Aer Lingus is leaving Tempelhof right now. I can brief you more when I get there. All right, good luck to you all, said Aiken. You two serious at the ambassador before hung up. Immediately afterwards, there was silence. Lamas and Aiken looked at each other. Both knew what this meant, what the pact would be with Germany and anarchy. What the economy would be with Germany and anarchy, and what Ireland would be now without its economic lifelines. Lamas cursed at the top of his lungs. He wasn't going to hide it. Hack awaits us. Oh, boy. Let's get some dinner with them before uh, they leave us. And uh, can we get some more funds? Sweet. Awesome. Because they're going to damage us. The worst case scenario. For months, we've been hearing rumors from Germania. Rumors of the Fuhrer's ailing health. Rumors of instability within the Reichstag. Now, that seems that the rumors have come to a head. Hitler is dead. His great Reich is in his death throes. Now, the various factions within the German government make war with each other in a desperate bid for power. Leaving the remaining nations within the Einheitspact all made to be dependent on the Reich in one sense or another to fend off from themselves. Ireland's economy, like many of those in the pact, has only survived thus far on the backs of the German investors and mega corporations. Both sources of revenue that have now dried up entirely due to the chaos of the German Civil War. Ireland stands alone for the first time in decades, and the economy has begun to flatline. Something must be done to stabilize the nation and fix the problem, and it must be done soon if we ever hope to recover. I'll be honest, though, like, we got a lot, we got a lot of civvies. How much does England have? I can't imagine the English are doing that well with their civvies. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We have like three, four times their civvies. Pfft, English. Huh. Inferior compared to the Irish folk. Franco Burgundian War, very cool. We even built up some more millies. Ooh, red corruption. Oh, a lesser opinion of us. So be it. I'm not sure that's really helpful at all, but we'll do it anyways. Oh. On the neck. Half a billion in debt. Not bad. Chaos in Austin has chaos. And then the right frontier can no longer hold. Goodbye, right frontier. Hold on tight. Just calm down. Seatbelt, everyone. Unite the doll. Uh, we are losing. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. Just calm down. The people of Ireland are quite reasonably in a state in a panic. Decades of economic growth have just been dashed against the stones in a matter of hours. And the weak settled people suddenly clearly can't afford basic necessities necessities like food and water. We need to calm them down before they start riding in the streets. Sean Lamas will give a series of televised speeches to the public urging calm in this time of crisis. He will also very publicly accept the lower pay and strongly urge other members of their government to follow suit. We must do all we can to show the people that we are on top of the situation and give the people of Ireland just a little bit of hope in these troubling times. It is what it is. The worst case scenario. Even though we're spending their money like crazy still. As Dandy walked down the beaten road, glancing from block to block, can you imagine what he saw here in Dublin was happening on every other Irish street? With front shops boarded up and the muffled city life that usually could be heard at this time of the night, all begun. 
Hope bit the dust behind all the closed doors, and the despair had swept into in swiftly to fill its place. Indeed, it was an empty and lifeless place to be left in. Danny thought that, in some weird way, he was no different to each of these abandoned buildings. He, too, had been ditched by everyone around him the moment the realization of economic chaos had set in. Though those who had already left had gone on to a far better place, at least that's what he imagined. Nevertheless, they'd gone, and he was left behind to rot. One of the only comforts Danny could find in the midst of all of this was the assurance that it could not possibly get any worse. The sheer amount of discontent and devastation would have to get the attention of those in power. Surely they would realize the need for change. They could not go on allowing him and the rest of Ireland to be beaten like this. A better country would surely form from all the insanity and confusion, yet that promise was not as comforting as he had thought first thought. Oh boy. <clears throat> Those who would allow the collapse to happen or appear to be in a charge of recovery. Again, Danny asked himself where all the hope of the last few years have bottom, and given the bleak reality endured, he cast out on any optimism he wants more. Why should he think the next era would be any better, let alone any different from the last? Things can only get better. Wow, that really sucks. It's all coming down? Oh, oh, okay. Remove all off-map factories gained from German funding. Well, that sucks. That really sucks. If that's the case, go ahead and just tax them. Nationalize everything they have. Man, I was doing so well here. We were doing so well. Ah, you're breaking my heart, game. Does this also hurt our... Oh, well, I'll see. Ah, why? Why do you hurt me so much, game? Game, we were doing so well. Ah. Hey, 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 we still have a, a, def a good deficit. Look at that. Okay, I'm okay then. I'm totally okay. We were doing so well, but then the game screwed us. Germany, why? Why did you have to be greedy with yourself? Oh, oh, breaking my heart. The economy. How about guns? Bread prices soar. Families across the aisle become quite used to cutting down the size of their shopping list. First went the few pleasant luxuries they could afford, TVs, telephones, and the like. Then more spending had to be stopped. New clothes, shoes, bedding, fuel, furniture, all were becoming too expensive for the majority of households, yet... To every worker's continuing to spare, prices continued to become steeper and steeper, while their incomes remained meager. It did not take long before there was little left to cut. Food had to be taken off their plates. Meals needed to be skipped. There was no choice but to ignore the constant aching in their half-starved stomachs, all while knowing that this was not their fault, still the prices rose. Without food to feed their families, the good citizens of Ireland despaired, for soon they would find that there was nothing left to lose but their lives. Something, anything has to be done. And in desperate times, radical people will rise up. They're still very present, but they have no approval, so... The roadside bombing. Inflation spirals out of control. Oh, this is fun. Uh, South African War. Prices rise by over a thousand percent. Carl, pack our stuff. Yes, all of it. We gotta go now, Carl. The headline alone is not to, not to spook Sean to his very core. He dared not to read any further in case it added more to his mounting stress. Sean knew he had to act decisive and fast if he would get out of here with, a, with anything of value. Yes, I'm serious, Clara. Or Kara. Sean exclaimed, struggling to keep his nerves in check. Pull, pack all you can. It's not like we'll be worth anything here. His last work was gone. His whole fortune, scant as it might have been, was reduced to nothing in the course of a few days. He could not even see a point in staying to the end of the week. To receive his pay, it would only be a matter of hours before the dudes in Dole wiped that out too. If he wanted a better life for him and his wife, there was no other option for Sean to, than to leave and leave fast. You know we're doing the right thing for both of us. There is nothing left for us here. You understand that, don't you, Carl? Everything of value is lost. Oh well, a roadside bombing. It was a sunny day in northern Irish county, countryside when he got the call. Something big had happened in a tiny village called White Cross and had HQ up all in arms. Inspector Doherty had gotten the call to come in as he was preparing for his daughter's wedding, a fact he was not ha very happy about. Unfortunately, the job had to come first. Doherty arrived at the scene pulling up to the side of the road. Police units had cordoned off a significant part of the street and were holding back a small but growing crowd of onlookers, likely a significant part of the tiny village. Waving his badge at one of the police officers, he made his way through the crowd into the clearing. One of the men surveying the site noted his entry. You, Amon Doherty, the man asked? Inspector Amon Darty of Garda Silchana. I was called in for something. What's the situation? The man had out his hand for Darty to take to shake. Officer James Flank in North Iron Ireland at Constellaberry. That's a mess right out here. Four officers of the army were killed in a roadside bombing. Crap, Darty swore. Crap is right. The military's pissed and we've got to play this safe. The military wanted to conduct the investigation themselves and it took a lot of convincing to get them to let us do it instead. All right, so what do we have to do so far? Dorothy asked. Well, we think it was Ulster Volunteer Force, Flanagan asked, but we don't have any solid evidence to prove that yet. We have a number of witnesses who are being held to answer some questions, and then there's the bodies themselves. There's not a whole lot left of them, but you might be able to glean something if you look hard enough. It's your show, Inspector. Just let us know if there's anything you need. Dorothy took for a moment to ponder before he came to decision, and in which I'm going to go ahead and save right now, just because if we screw this up, I want to make sure that we do this as, or become as successful as possible. So, yeah, here's all my saves too, so... Let's question the witnesses, see what they know. I'll call HQ about the dead officers. The case can wait until after the wedding. Question the witnesses, that's probably best. Just calm down. And unite the dole. Uh, hold on tight. 
Oh, the moral issue. Lord, I have a problem. I think we all do quite honestly. My country has its freedom. It no longer is, is an occupied colony of the British, and for that I am thankful, but sometimes, even as I look at my flag, I fear we have exchanged one master for another, and it has me wondering if we've lost our way as a nation. The Germans are everywhere now. German goods in our stores, German vehicles on our roads, even when we celebrate our troops when they march down the streets. They have German equipment and German trained officers. Our government is made up of a sole ruling party, and whatever the Germans want. In essence, we have treated our occupation and colonization by the English for, the, for a de facto colonization by the Germans. I know, maybe I shouldn't question it. My father does business with the Germans, and has made money off of it. <clears throat> Money that has gone in my family things we wouldn't have otherwise. Money has got to, has given me the quality of life I enjoy today. But I heard something about where that money comes from. That there are camps filled with slaves, and that's where all of our goods, equipment, and vehicles come from. I'm not sure. They say it's all lies, and the British mistreated the peoples under their rules well, but I know what the Germans have done in London, Warsaw, Rotterdam, and I can only imagine what they're doing to Africa and Siberia right now. The Spanish and Rome itself want nothing to do with them, and they aren't as Catholic as I am, right? The Germans might just be every bit as bad as the British, but wrapped in the cloth of Irish nationalism. So what I ask, Lord, is if we're really on this right path, or judgment is clouded, and I lack the way to know if I am on the path of righteousness. Please give me a sign, a signal that shows us which way is right. Amen. But hold on tight, my friends, if not over yet. The Irish economy is in free fall. Prices are collapsing. Production is grinding to a halt. People are waking up with fortunes acquired over a lifetime of work vanished before their very, very eyes. Oh boy, something must be done. We will close the stock market indefinitely to try to put a halt to brokers selling their stock into panic in the meanwhile. We'll also print more money in effort to try to fill the hole left by the departure of the German investors. Those will likely do no more than slow down the total economic collapse Ireland is tumbling towards. And will be terrible for the Irish economy in the long run, but we can worry about the long run when the Irish people can afford to buy food and the country isn't collapsing around us. Compelling the witness. Questioning the witnesses have been unproductive thus far. No one had seen much of anything of a note. And the people were all offering speculation on what had happened rather than anything concrete. I didn't see much. That all happened so fast, one had claimed. I just know it was those proddy dudes, said another. Only uh, one of them would have been so bold. I don't have any proof, but I know it's true. One had said something useful, however. I heard the attackers shout something out of their cars as they ran away, but I couldn't make out what was said. The witnesses said themselves. He pointed to a young man, maybe 17 or 18, lingering, lingering on the edge of the crowd. He was a lot closer to the attack. He might have heard something. Talking to the young man, however, had been less than successful. I told you, I didn't see anything, the young man protested. You're the closest one to the attack when it happened, Darty retorted. You can't possibly have seen nothing. Four men are dead, and you're the only one in the entire village who would be close enough to see what happened. The young man was silent for a minute, arms crossed against his chest. Like I said, officer, he said, unable to meet Darty's eyes, I didn't see anything. Darty walked away, going to confer with Officer Flanagan, as obviously the kid knows something. Flanagan nodded. The only question is why he won't talk. Darty thought to himself. The kid either played sympath either sympathized with the Protestants or was too afraid to talk. Accusing the kid of sympathizing with the attack would certainly be inflammatory, but it might scare him off into talking. On the other hand, coddling the kid might not convince him if he really did sympathize with the attack, but promises of safety might make him feel comfortable enough to testify. He's sympathizing with the UVF. We'll offer to keep him safe. I kind of want to be inflammatory, but let's offer to keep him safe. We'll see what happens. To me, that just personally doesn't seem like the right thing to do, but at least in that situation, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, middling, very weak. At least they're somewhat weak. Uh, that's good. The true culprit. Well, look at that. Dorothy walked over to where the boy had been standing. Listen, young man, I know you must be frightened after being so close to the attack. I know living here isn't the safest right now, but we can not We can keep you safe. The more you tell us, the better we can protect you and your family from the paramilitaries, but you need to talk to us. The boy was silent for a moment. I may have heard of something, he said hesitantly. The attackers, I heard them shout something at the officers before the attackers lobbed the bomb at them. Take that, you fascist, bad word, green shirts. I think it was. Another shouted about the attack being the will the working people made manifest or something. Do you know what that means, officer? Darty snapped his fingers. Yeah, he said, I think I do know what that means. Thanking the young man for his help, Darty walked over to confer with Flanagan. Got anything good from the kid, Flanagan asked? Darty nodded. It was in the Ulster Volunteer Force. So who was it then if it wasn't those losers, Flanagan responded. It was all right, Darty said. The kid said he heard them sprout off a couple of left wing slogans before they attacked the officers. The Ulster Volunteer Force wouldn't care all that much who they voted for in the last election. The IRA on their head then. Now just might. You think? Asked Flanagan. I know, responded Darty. It's the IRA. It has to be. I need to call HQ. Phone this in. You think you can get me a, t a telephone? I won't say a TV. Dorothy was led back out of the now dispersing crowds towards the payphone. Dialing the phone, it rang for a few moments before answering with the guard. Operator responded, This is Inspector Darty. I've got something for you. Nice. Well, even then, they're just. Oh, look, they're displeased. That's good. Non existent, non existent, and displeased. Pragmatism. In the town of Balbriggan. 
come to Dublin, lived a couple of boys. These boys got along very well and had been together since they were young children. They played the same sports, had the same classes, and knew the same girls. They all often talked about the same politics. It didn't make sense that Ireland should be in the pack, they thought. Weren't they supposed to be a democracy? What can Ireland expel that Nazi advisors and stand up to the Hun like Scotland or Wales had? The obvious answer was if they did, the Germans would swoop down and capitulate them in a week, so that was pretty much out of the question. The German Civil War changed the calculus, though. At this point, with the economic crash and preoccupation of the Nazis, Ireland has been granted a golden opportunity. She, she could slip her bounds blamelessly and once more be a free nation, and yet she would not. It didn't make sense to the boys at the Barbrigan that Ireland would choose to stay in the pact. Perhaps no nation would dare risk upsetting the hole the Germans still had. England did, and that changed the calculus. It was an outright embarrassment. Scotland had stood up, Wales had stood up, the bloody English were standing up, and the most historically abused, maltreated, forlorn people of the Isles did decide to purchase their lives in peace with change and slavery. This is not what the schools had told him as an Irishman was. How could they reconcile the image of a brave fighter for freedom with the downtrodden men who went along with whatever their master ordered them to do? They couldn't. And they're going to live that ideal if no one else would. One day, the boys disappeared, along with the motor launch from the harbor. Two shotguns, a hunting rifle, a revolver, and a library book detailing the lighthouses of the British exiles. Earlier that day, one had asked a fisherman if he knew if Auchinleck was holding the Isle of Man. One must make a stand. Oh, do we lose manpower? Oh, we're out of manpower. Oh, well... But how about that GDP and that debt? Wow, our growth is really bad. The Kingdom of Caucasia? Nice. That's really bad growth. That's almost not growth. Seatbelts, everyone. In the big aftermath of the Hitler's death and the chaos in Germany, big corporations that once stood tall with the assistance of the Reich find themselves teetering on the edge of oblivion. Enormous sectors of the Irish economy are tied up in one way or another with large companies and conglomerates, and their failure would tear giant holes in our already tattered economy. These corporations are simply too big to fail. We'll bail these out bail out the large corporations so that they can make it through the crisis without falling completely apart. It's sure to be an unpopular move among the people of Ireland, but they'll see it was necessary when we make it through this in one whole piece. If we get that far. Oh, we can repress people? Yeah. They're focusing the neck. Middling, extremely angry, 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 but non-existent. Persecution. Henry Molyneux was disappointed, but not surprised, when he was called into his manager's office at the local deli. The youth had quite liked the job, despite the low pay. He enjoyed talking to the customers, especially the little old Miss Mari. Or Mary. She was always kind and liked helping them with the purchases. As she, as he walked into the office, the face of his manager was consumed by a rictus of disgust and aimed directly at him. The smile was gone, his brow was furrowed. The sneer rendered him unrecognizable as a cheerful man who had welcomed Henry into the store months before. Everything was different, except for the eyes. Within them lay the familiar glare of hatred and prejudice he'd seen from so many others, a hatred he and his people knew better than anyone else. You're a Jew. It all took his strength not to sob. Henry, I can't believe that you would lie to me, his manager fumed. You were such a good worker, always came in on time and did your work, but now I find out you're a Jew? How could you lie to me like this? I, I never lied, sir, the 16-year-old said, sheepishly. You never told me, and that's bad enough. I'd find out from your neighbors that you're Jewish. You betrayed my trust, and I won't have any darn Jews poisoning my customers and stealing from the till. Do you understand me? His manager frowned at him, and as if looking for something he hadn't seen before, you're fired. I don't want to see you here ever again. Henry's uh, head hung low as a cheerful bell in the door announced his exit from the deli. That had been the third job in many years that he had been fired from. His parents had fled from the Nazis in France to Ireland when he was very young, but their prejudices and beliefs have followed them here. Henry knew nothing but Ireland, yet he was still treated as an outsider, seemingly unable to fit in anywhere. He, we sat and wept as we remember Sedina. Oh, we, success. Nice. And then, you know, the deli. Or, not the deli. The Dole. The Dole has always been a contentious body of lawmakers, day in and day out. Our TDs bicker and fight, angling for more political power and influence, either personal or for the party. Factions within the Dole war with each other, all hoping to drive Ireland towards their vision. This has to stop. For the most part, we were willing to let the TDs have their petty conflicts, but in the economic crisis we find ourselves in, this is no longer acceptable. For once, the Dole must unite and behind one batter, one plan, one idea for Ireland, that of the T-Shop. They might not like it, but they'll darn well comply if they want to keep Ireland in one piece. They can get back their petty bickering after we brought our greatest nation back from the brink of destruction. I can raise our salaries. They can be less corrupt. Uh, I don't want to spend our peepee, but... Uh, I don't know. I'm sure. What does corruption do for us? Suppression efficiency is pretty good, though. Government bails out Irish companies. Clutching is known as they had arrived from the government. Dermot hobbled as fast as his aging yet determined legs could bear. Despite the vigorous shaking of his hands, he grasped the thin rimmed spectacles, placing them on his pointed nose, and forced his tired eyes to dart across the page. But now he was desperate for any sign of respite from the uncertainty that had plagued his life these past few days. 
and the relief practically swept Dermot off his feet. A bailout was to be issued in order to prop up what remained of the Irish economy, and his company was to be included. He could keep his family and the families of his workers fed for another day, and his legacy would be preserved in the process. Of course, his worries were far from his side. The economic collapse had dealt with him a great deal of stress, which surely had done no good to his already declining health. Furthermore, Ireland's economy remained stagnant, and if things do not prove quickly, then the government's actions will be postponing the worst of Dermot's fears. Though it could get rest easier tonight, safe in the knowledge that his business would survive another day. At least someone... Was saved. Well, at least that's good. Also, Gil's getting 1.3 political power every single day. And now what, though? Now what? <clears throat> a few months ago, the Republic of Ireland faced one of her greatest crises or crises in the modern era. Ireland's economy, tied as it was to the now fractured German Reich, would begin to rapidly collapse in on itself and could not be stopped. Ireland was on a path to ruin, thankfully. Our emergency measures have worked. And while we may not have managed to completely stop the collapse, not yet, we have managed to slow it down enough that we have a little bit of room to breathe. Even still, we're not out of the woods yet. We must come up with a more permanent plan of action than our current emergency stop gap measures. <clears throat> if we fail all of our effort, all of our sacrifices, we all we have done will have been for nothing. We must not let that happen. The dream of Ireland must not die, but a rare show of unity. The doll was rarely a place of unity. There was a reason why it was way, widely believed that fistfights were more common occurrence than handshakes. Though in this time of crisis, there was little choice for the politicians besides working together. So a great deal of pride had been swallowed before the members of the doll convened to attempt to work together for once. Standing in his usual position, said the Dole, Lamas began his speech with a bold or perhaps more of an unwitting comment. I'm glad you have all finally come around to my way of thinking. Oh, for heaven's sake, sod off, Lamas. Get on with it, man. The Taoiseach scowled into the room of TDs, who were assembled, trying in vain to pick out who had spoken out in such a brash manner. Failing to find the culprit, he pressed on with more urgent manners at him. As in where we are all sure we're all aware, the current economic situation has deteriorated far beyond what any of us could have or er, anticipated. Now, we must work together to turn the sinking ship around or try and bail out what we can. Not one man expected for the following to be easy, however. The reality that they all had to agree to at least attempt to fix of the waning economy was enough to usher in a hope of a fundamentally different future. A future where Irish politics was less divisive and more constructive. A hopeful future that was unfortunately far removed from the reality of what Ireland was yet to endure. Off to a good start, at least. The next steps. It was the beginning of another day. Before the daily tense activity of the Dole had come into life, and Lamas was already working hard on how he was to express his preferred future economic policy to the rest of his party, his speech. Scheduled for later that same day was also going to mark a key turning point in the overall economic situation of Ireland. From a decline uh, to recovery, a process Lamas desperately wanted to be in control of. Better than he was in command than some crank from outside, uh, outside of Fina Fall he thought as he stood up to take a seat in the dole. After the strange business of the facing the dole was over with, Lamas headed hastily to the destination of the looming meeting, all the while going where the plan he had made earlier that day, and once the hour of the party congress had arrived, the Taoiseach's delivery was thoroughly rehearsed. The entire nation stands as a crossroad, and we in the Fina Fall are no doubt one of the most trusted to lead them towards a better, brighter age. There is no doubt that the fortunes of the people of Ireland have fallen foul to a spectacular downward spiral in which we empathize greatly. These people's futures demand that we, as a party, take action now. My accomplished colleague, Deputy Ryan, has already put forward such a thorough plan for action that will surely usher in a new economic age. All I ask from you, as members of the Fina Fall, is to uh, back this deal and end this madness. A tired ripple of applause came up from the party members in reply, nothing like as a resounding response as Lamas had hoped for. In a moment, the man realized how futile his actions were. Even his party would remain uncooperative. Inspiring words falling on deaf ears in for nothing. Talk to the party. Unfortunately, we have failed to come up with a solution to the current economic crisis we find ourselves in. However, <clears throat> However, however, thankfully, we do not need to come up with a solution for our problems by ourselves. Fianna Fáil has governed the Republic of Ireland through many crises over the past few decades, and surely we will be able to help us come up with a solution to this one. Sean Lamas has called for a general congress of the Fianna Fáil, where we will discuss possible solutions for issues. All current members of the party will come together in a great effort to finally find a solution. With so many people working on the current problem, someone will have to, someone will have to be able to come up with a solution for us. Right? Right? Mm. We can do that one. Why not? Still 1.3 every day, which is very good. Even though we keep spending more money, which is fine, whatever. And then, too little, too late. We have failed. Sean Lamas has failed. Fina Fall failed. Fall has failed. The General Congress was a failure. Not a single party member was able to come up with a plan during the Congress to solve this economic crisis we have been in for months. Not all is lost, however. Thankfully, we have one last option available to us. The Coalition. We will summon the entirety of our government coalition, all members of both Fianna Fáil and Irish Labour, to one grand conference, where we will discuss plans in an attempt to find a solution to our economic collapse, to once and for all save the Republic of Ireland. We're running out of time. If we do not come up with a plan now, the Republic of Ireland will surely be lost. This is our last chance of fixings. We should act now. If we, The Emerald Hour... 
Emerald Isles ever shine again. Nice. Uh, better artillery. You never know if we have to get really close with other people. We'll put it like that. More stuff attack. Root corruption would be very good. I don't want to have less opinion, though. Um, I just want to kill off the terrorist groups, man. To be honest with you. A little rebel. Uh, Arthur gripped the can of orange spray paint with a white knuckle fist. It may have been nothing but paint, but it was certainly only rifle a 13-year-old boy could ever hope to wield until he was older. Arthur was ready to fight for his community, ready to fight for a free and independent Ulster. He hadn't chosen this fight, it had been brought to him. How could there be peace when all the Catholics in his school found any excuse in the world to beat on him? How could he turn the other cheek when the Greens wouldn't leave him alone? Arthur felt a revolutionary fire in him from an early age, but the adults told him that he could join the fight when he was older. Now, none of them could comprehend. The fight was here now, and Arthur was already part of it. He looked up to his Uncle James. James was a UVF man to his core, a man who would probably show off the bruises he earned in f fights with the Papist dudes. Even Uncle James told Arthur he was too young when Arthur asked for help joining the UVF. Arthur's lips lifted into a grin as he admired the art he had made in the Night of Rebellion. So what if they didn't let him fight on the streets? There were other ways to contribute to the cause. Reporters flocked to his hand to work in the morning, and different UVF factions each fought to, to take the credit for what he had made. They were on a big white wall on the edge of town. Usually using nothing but paint and stencils he wiped from his school, or swept from the school. Arthur had written the words that he would go down in history as an emblem of a troubled era. You are now entering free Londonary. Londonary, huh. Okay, cool. As an American, this stuff is all like, hmm, I'm learning a lot here. Nearly non-existent, good. Haunts from the past and fear of the future. I hope you're aware that you could have prevented this whole thing. Of course, his words stung Lamas far more than he was willing to admit, even to himself. If the man was not such of such importance to the government, he would have been swung back in a much less literary manner, but even that would not have removed the nagging in the back of his mind that constantly questions if what he did and carries on is right. Carry on doing what is right. I've done nothing but what's best for Ireland at all times, and I plan to continue doing just that. The growingly despondent T Shock responded. Now let's just move on to what we can do rather than what whenever any of us did not do in the past, huh? For starters, we really need to start letting the Americans invest in Ireland and allow for this whole cycle to repeat with the U.S. instead of the Germans. I rather hope not. McEntee shot back. We need to rely on no one but ourselves and that this way, chaos will never come back to haunt us. Corrish nodded with slight approval. Seeing this, Lamas tried to keep his face from dropping in despair. Nothing ever came easy in Ireland, but this was ridiculous. Hammering out a new economic policy was going to be a Herculean task, and Lamas knew he had banishing little willingness to overcome such an obstacle, though he was not about to let his growing hopelessness catch on. He always had been a fighter, so to fight was his only option if he were going to hang on. We move forward. Oh, oh, look at all this. Nice. Four different paths. Or I guess technically three different paths. <clears throat> the Irish Depression. Ireland is a land of relative peace and prosperity compared to the rest of Europe, or perhaps it might be better to say that it used to be such. We cannot in good conscience ignore the realities of our situation any longer. We are now in an economic depression and our people will soon be begging in the streets should we do nothing about it. Of course, the actual course of action we shall take is something of an open question. There are enough conflicting interests and political heavyweights shoving their opinions around on this issue that we could well be a challenge to solve at all. Still, we are not a land renowned for inaction. We shall bring Ireland back to our glory, for we fear what could occur if we do not. Good, good, good. Root out corruption. I'd love to do that, but still 55. They're weakening and extremely angry, but everyone else is angry. Everyone in Ireland is angry right now. Oh, our GDP growth will slightly increase. Back to the old drawing board. We need all the parties on board with what we are about to do if we have any chance of success. If, oh my goodness, I apologize. Any chance of succeeding. All the factions and cliques, everyone of influence, we need some same planning process or at least some method of making their desires understood. Naturally, we will choose what is best of, of Ireland at the end of it, yet we cannot escape that necessity, that broad support, and the political class is vital to getting anything done around here. On a secondary note, we should see to what degree our foreign officer can inform us on the desires of the Americans in Reich. If one or the other is especially open, it might be beneficial to choose one course of action over the other. Still, not bad. The Splinters. The Dole was never an ordinary place, but even the optimists among them, its members would be hard-pressed to find a time, or remember a time, when the mood was just joyful, for amongst many its ranks, the reality of the situation they faced was only just beginning to set in. The reality that with the advent of the German r bubble bursting, the Irish economy, and potentially Ireland itself, herself, could follow soon enough. Yet, as the debates raged, it became apparent to observers that several camps had emerged amongst the paramilitarians. Parliamentarians. Some favored a landing with Americans, some favored isolation until the tides of international politics had calmed. Well, a few even thought it best to wait until a vector emerged in the Reich and aligned with whoever had won the bloody conflict. What was explicitly clear, however, was that the Dáil needed to be uni united on the decision they took eventually. Else, the internal troubles Ireland faced might tear it apart before the foreigners even got the chance. Dole this, dole that. Politicians are an unruly lot. 
Pine, elected president of France. Oh, good. good Ooh, send weapons. Oh, we can send weapons. They have a greater opinion of us, which is fine. I'd rather do corruption, though. That's fine. Bacon always sells. Michael Alouive, Alouive walked across the farm to the shed as he was walking, as he could feel the air nipping to, at his hands. He cupped his hands to his face in an attempt to warm them up with his breath. While at work for a few moments, the sensation faded away quickly. He came upon the shed as he unlocked the door before entering. Once he was inside, he grabbed the nearest bag of feed and began to walk back. He could feel his back beginning to ache. Fifteen years of working on a farm doesn't do the greatest wonders at times. He finally came to the corral with the animals in it. Unlike most farms in Ireland, this one had mostly pigs instead of sheep. He could open the bag with a knife and dump the feed into the trough. Suddenly, three little piglets came out of the shelter part and came to the trough. Michael smiled and walked away. He walked down to the truck. Already there was his business partner, Louis. Or Louis. Lewis handed him a clipboard with a hastily written report of products that had to be loaded under the truck. Lewis had been up since the early hours of the morning, loading up the truck for transit across the North Sea and the English Channel into the heart of Europe. Sometimes it would sting to see the truck leave the farm, no longer helping Ireland, but the war machine of Europe. Michael would feel this sometimes, but usually this feeling was alleviated when he was given a nice stack of pounds. Another day's honest work. Choosing a plan, though. Sean Lamass, Sean McEntee, Brendan Korish, three men who each have a vision for Ireland's future which promises to be full of wealth for all of us and for most of, for us most of all. Yet yeah, in a perhaps fitting dilemma, each and every one of their policies is directly at odds with one another. Lamass wants to join, be joined at the hip to the Americans, heedless of what the Germans would say. Korish is practically a socialist, with all the political problems implied, and McEntee wants to do all but cut us off from the global markets and reinstitute austerity. Heedless of the human costs, yet each of their pleas has pr promise. Or plans of promise. We only need to choose which one benefits Ireland the most. A bad done, bad plan done. Well, very nice. Cool. No more bills, I guess, for now. There's nothing here too. That sucks. Well, choosing a plan. Sean Lamass's headache was growing. What had been a dull throb as he drove into the dull today had become a splitting migraine as a skull attempted to declare independence from the rest of his head. Ha ha. The bickering of his party man was the clear cause of the affliction, though at this point he could hardly hear the quarrel about economic policy over the pulsing agony of his head. Finally, after two MPs shot to their feet in anger with one another, knocking their chairs out from beneath behind them, did Lamas finally feel infuriated enough to step in. Does anyone remember what the word coalition means, he said, his reddened eyes glaring across the hall at his party members? It means that while we do not agree on everything, we cooperate and compromise. I had a preferred policy, McEntee has a preferred policy, Korsh has a preferred policy, and every man in here has an opinion on which bloody plan we should follow, and we all despise what they others have proposed. Lamas paused as every member of his party stared at him in confusion, most assuming he was about to make a play to have his own economic proposal come out ahead. He shook his head at the notion. He wanted to get his own way just as the others did, but this wasn't an attempt to do a partisan within his own party. There is such a thing as a good plan done poorly. If we step forward with a plan you, that you agree with, it can still be ruined by the rest of the party, sabotaging it in anger about that their own plan wasn't chosen instead. Likewise, there is such a thing as a bad plan done well. Perhaps the plan we choose won't be the one that pleases you personally, but Ireland will be better off if we work together to see the best version of that plan or policy implemented. Whatever is chosen, we in the FINA Fall LP coalition must stand by it and rally around it. Whether we personally agree with the policy or not, anything less would simply be a sabotaging Ireland's future. Which I probably want to go ahead and do. Restoring public trust. Thousands of are out of work. Lying in the streets in search of jobs, relief or even a warm meal. Factories are closed and stores are shuttered. Everywhere, people are wondering if tomorrow they'll get a pink slip or the kids will go hungry. How can anyone feel pride in being from Ireland? And how can anyone think of voting for Fianna Fáil, the ones who mess up in the first place? Regardless of how much blame is on us versus outside factors, we have to confront the fact that people do not like us head on. We're the party that saw the people of Ireland through terrible situations like this. We're the party you put your trust in and we're going to be the ones to fix this. Our economic relief policies will take care of fiscal matters. Now it's time for Ireland's mental relief as well. ICG Terror. Smoke rises over at Protestant Ulster. If you'd like to read about that, please go ahead, but it is what it is. Mm. Greater opinion, less corrupt? Slightly corrupt. Nice. I just hope we do well here. But you know what? That GDP growth has definitely gotten better than what it used to be. Debt? I mean, Ireland, even in a depression, is still cutting down its debt. Very nice. I don't know why my voice keeps changing. Oh, who's the fascist here? Redacted. Oh, it's fa redacted, huh? The Heights of Progress. The sound of mixing paint was one that calmed Al, and the sound of sloshing paint reminded him of the summers he would spend with his family in Dover. As he mixed, he thought back to what it felt like a whole other world. Alan was once a lawyer, one with a considerable amount of respect from his co-workers. He took his bar exam in the waiting days of peace in Europe, and felt like yesterday that he was sitting in his flat, preparing for all of it. 
All that effort, all for the few years of stability, Alan had made a name for himself after taking the exam by taking a class that nearly half the other members of the law practice he joined avoided. It was a case regarding the influence of the German companies inside England and the Greater British Isles. By a stroke of luck, British intelligence had uncovered an effort by the companies to undermine Britain. Luckily, evidence had been submitted in time to help Alan win the case. By doing this, he became sort of a local hero to the many small businesses of South England, and for a few years, he was at peace. Then the war had broken out and Alan was drafted. He served on the desperate battle for England, not before sending his wife and two kids into Scotland with a group of soldiers defecting to Scotland, promising he would join them. However, this didn't come. The Scottish border had become locked down as he declared independence. Alan found a way off England on a fishing boat to Ireland. When he landed, he was penniless and at the bottom of the society, a far cry from the life he had. He soon snapped out of it after he realized what he'd been mixing paint for nearly ten minutes. He added the fishing, fishing touches to the fence and smiled. He was just happy to be alive and to find a purpose. He examined his work, proud of what? He has done. Oh, he's proud. And he goes to Croatia. Goodbye, Croatia. Send weapons? Uh, I mean, I guess. I'm not sure we need to keep our people or not. They like us. Barely. They barely like us. Well, I guess it's better, better to be like then. Oh, we can repress people? Weakening? Not distant? Extremely angry? What? Well, what else is new? Restoring public trust? And Lamas told them he would think it over. That he needed to sleep on it before he made his call. That was that it was a big decision he would have to make. And he wanted to explore all the options. However, he now found the decision was extremely hard. As the options were limited and the party would be behind him no matter which one he picked. The first plan in front of him was... Ooh, oh god, someone already put this in the comments for me. Tanishtah's plan. Sean McEntee uh, wanted to take control of the rising deficit and trade gap. In his mind, Ireland had become too reliant on foreign trade and the German stranglehold had ended up killing it when the foreign trade had gotten away. Strict protectionism would be put in place to prevent such a thing from ever happening again, and as for the budget shortfall, any decrease in revenue would be made up for with a decrease in spending. Brendan Cornish, on the other hand, thought Austria was the exact opposite way to solve the problem. The main problem wasn't that the government did not have money to spend, it was the people of Ireland that did not have any either. Under his plan, a set of relief programs aimed at the lower and middle class would be put into place, with the goal of giving them what they needed to bear the brunt of the crisis and eventually start spending again. These plans had their merits, but perhaps Lamas knows better? He had done some thinking of his own, and he felt that it was a little more simple solution to the crisis, one that did not require large deficits or unpopular spending cuts. Now, that Germany was in a series of violent death rows, who could stop Ireland from making some favorable deals with the OFM? Then they would fill the gap and never rely solely on the Germans again. In the end, Lamas decided just before going to bed, and would inform the rest of the government in the morning. We call Washington begin to play nice. We must set in the belts. Relief and seamless will be dispatched immediately. But I think I'm going to unfortunately end here this episode. And I'm thinking maybe, you know what, we're already at this point of the campaign. What if we were to do all three routes, you know, overall? Why not? Maybe we'll try that. But let me know your thoughts about that in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we've made our choice. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great Irish, all rest of your day.